Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about a director that I only discovered a, <clears throat> a few months ago, an Italian director by the name of Antonio Pet Petrangeli. He made films in the 50s and the 60s. Uh, I discovered him. I had come across the name <clears throat> before, and, uh, but I'd never seen any of his movies. Didn't know really anything about him. Uh, I was doing a one of those random searches through the the uh, depths of uh, the Amazon Prime library. <laughs> you never know what you're going to find when you when you dig deep. And I found six movies by Antonio Petrangeli that were free to Amazon Prime members. I watched one. I can't remember which one it was now, but I watched all the the other five in the matter of a couple of days. And and since I've watched each of them at least one time uh, as well or more time. Um, he, he was a director, like many of the Italian directors of the 1950s, 1960s. He started out, off working with Lucino Visconti, Roberto Rossellini in the neo-realist uh, era. Uh, he was also a movie critic, uh, and he wrote screenplays. And uh, the, uh, the first, his first film is not available. Uh, and then he, before, in the movie I want to talk about today, The Bachelor, is uh, the first one in chronologically speaking. Um, but to, to continue on with uh, Peter and Jelly's career, um, in 1968, I think it was, he was only 49 years old, uh, while he was working on what turned out to be his final film, he, he uh, uh, drowned in a swimming accident very tragically, and certainly he, he was at the prime of his career. Uh, after I watched those six movies that Amazon Prime has, uh, I didn't realize that I, I knew her well, which is on the Criterion channel and also a Criterion <clears throat> collection release, and they, that he directed that with Stefania Sandrelli, and, and that turned out to be a great movie. I guess it's, it's, it's considered to be his uh, masterpiece, which is why it's on Criterion. Raro Video also has uh, Adjua and her friends, um, and they also have The Visit, which is uh, both of the, both of the, those movies that are on the Ruro Blu-rays are uh, tremendous movies. <clears throat> but uh, I really like The Bachelor. Uh, it's, uh, it, it, it concerns a lot of the, um, the elements of Italian society that uh, Peter and Jelly was so good at evoking. And he could evoke them both dramatically and and uh, comically. He really had a very unique comic style. He's very good at, at the confusion that men and women have in this post-war era of, of what their relationships are, how fraught, it's almost like a battlefield, a minefield that they have to go through. Um, uh, Alberto Sordi plays The Bachelor in his 1955 movie and he was one of the greatest Italian movie actors. I, I have not seen that many movies with Alberto Sordi, but I read on Wikipedia that when he died, he, a million people thronged his funeral procession. So he's obviously incredibly popular. Uh, you, the other movies that I'd seen that he was in before The Bachelor were the two um, Fellini movies he was in. Uh, the White Cheek, he was the titular White Cheek in the, in the in uh, Fellini's uh, first solo directing effort. And then he was also one of the Ivetaloni boys. Um, I, thought he, I thought he was the best thing in that movie. Fellini, uh, in the second half of that movie, goes to the womanizing uh, um, uh, Ronaldo, Ronaldo, I think his name is. Uh, but the, the character that Sordi plays is very, very unusual. He's sort of like a closeted gay. And, uh, but no one, you know, identifies that in his, uh, in his character. In this film, he is, he is another a womanizer, and this is, I think, one of the problems that Peter and Jelly sees in uh, Italian men, at least at that time, and maybe men in general, in that they, uh, they don't want to give up their freedom because they're enjoying the good life so much of bachelorhood. And this is sort of a... La Dolce Vita story, it's, a, it's where his character has come from the provinces to Rome, he's made good, he's, he, he's a partner in a uh, appliance uh, wholesale uh, store. In the beginning of the film, the, um, the, um, uh, 
his partner and his roommate has gotten married and they see him at the wedding. No way, no way I'm ever going to do this. Now, but now he has to go out on his own. He's not, not going to be able to live with uh, uh, the newlyweds. And um, there's a really interesting anecdote when he moves into this guest house because across the hall there is a young woman who is an airline stewardess. And in the limited amount of opportunity as the young woman women had to to make it on their own. Airline stewardess was one of those. I think I think they were all women in the 1950s. And uh, he showers her with attention, but then when she brings up the subject of marriage, uh, and this they made it to the to the bed stage. Uh, uh, when he then he sir unceremoniously without explanation just dumps her. And this. Uh, this character is played by Sandra Milo, uh, also famous for two performances in Fellini, later Fellini movies in uh, Eight and a Half and Julia the Spirits. This was her first film, and she would she would go on to play in other uh, Peter and Jelly very effectively, especially in the movie The Visit. She's absolutely beautiful here, and it's an interesting little uh, tidbit or little small scale characterization because she never gets angry with him, doesn't yell at him. Uh, her co-workers tell her, well, that's all you can expect out of men. You know, that as soon as they get what they want, then they move on. And, and uh, they meet again. She decides uh, she's been very affected by it, even though you don't see it on the surface. You see it below the surface. And so she's moving to another city in Italy uh, just to get away from the memory. He just sees it as, uh, as another... Uh, conquest and this is what he does and he but even been, but below that you see that there is a sensitive nature to this to this guy and uh, of course it already makes him funny uh, he's the whole picture really I mean it's one of those one character pictures there's other characters like Sandra Milo in the movie but every all those other characters sort of are there to define define um, uh, Alberto Sordi's uh, predicament and um, and, and, and he's, he doesn't seem to be all that successful or, or all that contented <laughs> with this bachelor life that he is extolling. There's a couple of uh, interesting abrupt transitions in the film, and, and Peter and Jelly was very good at abrupt transitions, especially his endings. Uh, many of, the, the, of these six films, maybe not all, but they have abrupt endings that are kind of unexpected. You don't you don't see it coming, and then they're over very quickly. And uh, but in the in the middle of the film, uh, Sordi goes back to the provinces. He's uh, visiting his mother, his sister, and and there are shades of Ivatelloni in this in, in, in his visit. <clears throat> uh, Ivatelloni was I think two years before because he comes back to the provinces and, you know, uh, he's a big hero. He's living with Dolce Vita. Uh, the boys, the Ivatelloni of, of this particular town are, meet, are gathered at the cafe as he regales them with stories of his conquests and they're just, oh, if only we could get to Rome. And this is the theme you see in, in all the, uh, in so many of the Italian films of that era. And as part of uh, his mo his mother commissions uh, Sorty to uh, his sister has been uh, uh, engaged for four years, but the fiance shows no compulsion to to actually have a wedding. His his mother Sorty's mother commissions him to convince him, and Sorty his job is is a very effective salesman, so he. He follows him. This act, this character is played by Man Nano Manfredi, who is a really uh, great actor, and he's only in it for about ten minutes, so he gets a very big billing in the film. And um, as he's making this this uh, this spiel for marriage, it's you know it's about time he starts seeing <laughs> you know, so he's starting to believe in himself about himself. Uh, this is a real good. Uh, 10, 50 minutes worth of film when he goes back to the provinces. There's another abrupt transition uh, later on where uh, all of a sudden we're in a nightclub. It's almost like a Citizen Kane kind of uh, transition. We see Abby Lane, who was... Uh, actually, I think we first see Xavier Cougat, who was a band leader. Abby Lane, I believe, was, was uh, 
uh, was his wife at the time, and she had a lot of uh, hit records in the 50s and who got, was very famous on American television. And, and uh, he, she uh, gets uh, Alberto Sordi up to dance with her, and it's very funny. But he, he begins to, the inauthenticity of the life that he's leading is, you can see it hitting over his head more and more. So it's a, it's a, it's a funny comedy, and uh, it, uh, it's also kind of a sad, bittersweet, maybe, I don't know. But it, it, it has some depth to it, and uh, I found, I've, I've watched it three times now. So it's one of those comedies you can really go back. It's so for, um, for uh, uh, discovering a new director, if you're in the mood for that, Antonio Peter Jelly might be, uh, uh, might be a, a recommendation. And for Alberto Sordi, if you've never seen him before, and if you if you want to see uh, Sordi Sordi's range, uh, there's a film playing on the Criterion Channel. I think it's out of print on their on a physical release, but uh, it's playing on the channel. It's called Mafioso, uh, made about eight seven eight years later for Alberto Latawada, and he, which he plays a uh, made man made when he was you know a teenager, and then he goes. They send him to the north. He becomes a Sicilian who succeeds in the north. He comes back for a vacation, and now he's expected to pay back the favors they granted him by having to perform a hit. Well, he's he's totally unprepared for this, and but uh, Sordi uh, gives a great performance in that as well. So for Pirti and Jelly, for Sordi, if you've never seen them before, I think they they may be well worth catching, especially if you're in the mood for something different. Okay, that'll about wrap this one up, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time.